the company is structured for you. I am Katie Menali. Guys, if you are new to my channel, I have brought the new series of videos containing the curriculum of SE and class 10 science in this playlist. Please do like, share and subscribe my channel and also do not forget to click the bell icon to get the alert of new videos. Guys, this is the second video of lesson 4. We will talk about gravitation in this video. So let's start. Dear friends, the force of gravitation is our one of the most beautiful topic. Newton said before many years like in 1687 AD that every object attracts every other object with a force and that is known as force of gravitation. Friends, if it is so, then why not the objects which we see around us pull each other? Why we can't see our materials attracting towards each other? There may be a lot of questions regarding this, right? But friends, he also said that the gravitational force of attraction between two ordinary sized objects like a stone, rock, mountain between each other is so negligible that they cannot be attracted to each other as gravitational force of attraction is the weakest force in nature. These forces are so small and negligible that we can't feel them. The objects bond each other only if the objects are very big like mass of the planets and other heavenly bodies. That is why we see an apple falling down from the tree on the earth, snow falling from the sky, something when thrown up comes down, etc. He also concluded that it is not only earth which pulls the other objects but every object in this universe attracts its other. We see an apple falling down from tree, we see snow falling down from mountain, we see the things what is thrown up falls down and so on. He claimed uh, for a small body the force of gravitation is so small that it, is, it cannot be detected easily. But bigger objects like earth attracts other bodies lying on or near to its surface. For example, a rock lying on the ground attract each other. But the force is so small that we do not notice them. Also their motion at all. Friends, I will give you one more natural phenomena to make you more clear about the force of gravitation. Have you ever observed the big mass of water rising up from the oceans? Do you know what it is called? It is called the tides in oceans. Friends, why it is caused? Do you know that? It is because of same force of gravitation and that exists between the sun and the moon on the earth. Friends, you may be thinking if the gravitational force between the sun and the moon on the earth causes tides on the earth, then why its effect is not felt on the swell? Friends, the effect of gravitational force occurs more distinctly on liquids than on solids as the molecules of liquids are loosely packed and because of which the intermolecular force of attraction is less in liquid than in solids. So we find the effect on liquid but not in solid. Friends, our earth revolves around the sun, the moon revolves around the earth, the both earth and the moon revolves around the sun. Do you know why they revolve around the sun? That all is because of the gravitational force of attraction between the sun and the planets. Friends, this all what has made the evolution of all the planets like Mars, like Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, around the sun and all the satellites like Deimos, Phobos, Europa, Titan, Triton, around the planets is because of gravitational force between the sun, planets and the satellites. Friends, you may have heard heliocentric model and geocentric model. Geocentric model said the earth is at the center and other heavenly bodies, including sun, revolves around the earth. This concept was proved wrong after the development of telescope. Again, next to it, heliocentric model explained the sun is at the center and the planets, including the earth and other heavenly bodies, they all revolve around the sun. In heliocentric model, planets revolve around the sun and satellites revolve around the planets and this is possible because of gravitational force between the sun and the earth and earth and the moon which keeps the earth in circular motion around the sun. Dear friends, you may have learned why don't the satellites fall while revolving around the earth. 
Obviously, the gravitational force of attraction of the earth on the satellite provides necessary centripetal force to the satellite and due to escape velocity, it goes far from the circular motion. Now, let's know in detail about the law given by Newton, that is Newton's law of gravitation. The great physicist Sir Isaac Newton propounded the law of gravitation when he saw an apple falling down from the tree. His law of gravitation states every body in the universe attracts every other body with a force which is directly proportional to product of their masses and inversely proportional to square of distance between their centers. I repeat, every body in the universe attracts every other body with a force which is directly proportional to product of their masses and inversely proportional to square of distance between their centers. Now, let's have a look in this example. These are two different ordinary size objects, a ball and a stone. These two objects have certain mass. Suppose the mass of ball be m1 and mass of stone be m2. See, these two objects are few centimeters apart from each other. Now, let us suppose the distance be d. Generally, we suppose first letter of any physical quantity as their symbol. So, the first letters of mass is m1 for first object and m2 is for second object and distance d are the symbols respectively. These two objects are attracting each other by certain force. Let's say the force between them is given by F and it is applied by both the objects towards the center in the straight line. According to Newton's law of gravitation, we can write or we have learned Everybody in the universe, either small or big, attracts every other body with a force which is directly proportional to the product of their masses. So that is, we can write F is proportional to M1 dot M2. Let us suppose this become equation number 1. So here, both the objects attract each other, so we write product of their masses. And the same force is inversely proportional to a square of distance between their centers. That is, F is proportional to 1 upon d square. Suppose equation number 2. Here, for both the objects, the distance becomes the same. And that is why it is d times t equal to d square. For object m1, the m2 is d distance apart. And again, for object m2, the object m1 is d distance apart. So combining equation 1 and 2, we get F is proportional to m1 dot m2 divided by d square. Or f equal to z times m1 m2 by d square. In place of proportional sign, we replace that sign by writing z and this z is the constant and that is called universal gravitational constraint and its value is 6.67 into 10 power minus 11 newton meter square per kg square. Friends, now let's understand more about universal gravitational constant. So for that, let's take any two bodies, each of mass 1 kg and let us suppose the distance between them is 1 meter. Do you know what is the force of gravitation between these two objects? Okay, let's find it. We have from our formula f equal to z times m1 m2 upon d square. So here we suppose unit masses of both the objects. So that is why we write m1 equal to m2 equal to 1 kg and distance is equal to 1 meter that is d equal to 1 meter. So, in place of all the symbols, if we keep the value 1, we can find f equal to z times 1 dot 1 divided by 1 square. Now, we get f equal to z. The universal gravitational constant becomes equal to the force of gravitation. But this gravitational force is the force between two objects of mass 1 kg and kept at distance of 1 meter. Thus, universal gravitational constant is the force of attraction between two bodies of unit masses and separated by unit distance. That means the both objects should be of 1 kg and the distance between them should be of 1 meter. If that is, then the force of attraction between them becomes equal to universal gravitational constant that is z. So from Newton's law of gravitation, we can write f equal to z times m1 m2 by d square. Now if we want to find the unit for z then let us find the formula for z so z equal to f into d square divided by m1 dot m2 after doing cross multiplication we found this formula now if we keep the si unit for all these quantities we can easily find the si unit for z that is z equal to f in newton 
d square in meter square m1 in kg and m2 in kg again so that means newton meter square per kg square became si unit for universal gravitational constant so therefore SI unit of G is Newton meter square per kg square. You may have seen what force is applied between the two objects of unit masses separated by unit distance. This is very very less that is 6.67 into 10 power minus 11 Newton. That is why we can say gravitational force is the weakest force among all natural forces. So we won't see a book attracting the pen or a heel attracting a stone. Dear friends, do you know Newton's law of gravitation is also called universal law? Newton's law of gravitation holds true or is applicable to all the objects present in the universe, whether the objects are terrestrial or celestial. The gravitational force between any two objects exists everywhere in the universe. Therefore, Newton's law of gravitation is also called universal law of gravitation. Friends, to make you clear, here I will show you what is the force of gravitation between the 10,000 kg heavy truck and a man of 50 kg. Let us keep the distance between them be 2 meter. So here the mass of truck is 10,000 kg, mass of man is 50 kg and distance between them is 2 meter. Then the force of gravitation between them is given by the formula F equal to G times M1 dot M2 divided by D square. Now let's replace the value of M1, M2 and D square by the above given value. After we replace, we find F equal to 6.67 into 10 power minus 11 multiplied by 10,000 kg, multiplied by 50 kg and divided by 3 square. Now if we solve this, we find out F equal to 8.33 into 10 power minus 6 Newton. Friends, even to lift a mass of 1 kg, we require 1 kg into 9.8 meter per second square, that is 9.8 Newton. Here this force between the truck and man is so small that is why we can't see the truck pulling the man towards it. In the same way the book can't pull the pen and the heel cannot pull the stone and so on. If it is so then friends what is the force between the sun and the earth so that they attract each other. Let's find it. The sun has the mass 2 into 10 power 30 kg and the earth has the mass 6 into 10 power 24 kg. We know that they both are at the distance of 1.5 into 10 power 11 meter. So now we have the formula F equal to G times M1 M2 by D square. In this all formula we can keep the value for M1, M2 and D. The value for M1 means mass of the sun that is 2 into 10 power 30 kg. M2 means mass of the earth that is 6 into 10 power 24 kg and D is the distance that is 1.5 into 10 power 11 meter. So let us keep these all values in this formula. After we keep these all values we find F equal to 6.67 into 10 power minus 11 multiplied by 2 into 10 power 30 kg multiplied by 6 into 10 power 24 kg divide by 1.5 into 10 power 11 meter whole square now after we solve this equation we can find or uh, we found f equal to 3.55 into 10 power 22 newton see this is very very useful so that the sun pulls earth towards its center at the same time earth gives an necessary centrifugal force and try to go away from the center and revolves making an orbit instead of collapsing to the center of the sun. Dear friends, till now you may have thought some major consequences of gravitational force, right? See, existence of solar system, galaxies and constellation, revolution of planets around the sun, revolution of natural satellites around the planets, formation of tides in sea, rainfall on the earth. So they all are its major consequences. This law can be applicable for determining the mass of heavenly bodies to calculate distance between heavenly bodies like earth and the sun and also to discover new planets, stars and other heavenly bodies. Dear friends, do you know what happens to the force of gravitation when the masses and distance between the two objects are changed? Well, don't worry, we will learn together but not now. We will learn it on our next video. Dear friends, do not forget to subscribe my channel. I will be right back. Till then, stay safe, take care, bye bye.